Hello, hello, hello. It's the Tax Lean Lady and we are live on Facebook. This is Tax Lean Lady Live where I answer your questions about tax lean and tax deed investing. And I want to say Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Um, Nicole isn't with me yet, but I expect she'll be here any second now. And um, let me know what your questions are about tax lien and tax deed investing. Um, and uh, when you do come on, um, let me know where you're coming from. Say hello so that I know who's here, where you're from, and then I can better help you and answer your questions about tax lien investing because guess what? It's different everywhere. <laughs> Every state is different. Anybody that tells you they're an expert all over the country is probably not telling you the truth. <laughs> you know, I will tell you, I'm not an expert in every state. It's a lot of states that I know a lot about um, and a lot of states that I've personally invested in, but I haven't personally invested in every state. Okay. Um, but I can tell you where to find out the information. Um, and whether that state is a good state to invest in or not. So let me know what your questions are. Hello, Nicole, happy new year to you. And let me know, Nicole, um, do we, did we have any questions ahead of time? Hi, Benjamin from Rochester, New York. Uh, I like New York. <laughs> I like New York. The cities in New York, believe it or not, the, um, the counties, most of the counties have deeds. They have deed sales. A lot of them are online, but the cities can do their own thing. And some of the cities have lien sales. Okay. Um, Nicole is giving me a question from Sarah. Hi, Sarah from Montgomery County, PA. Okay. Uh, and of course I'm in PA. I'm in Monroe County. But, um, okay, you invest in Florida and New Jersey, and you're interested in deeds in New York as well. Well, let me tell you where to go to find out about the ones that are online. It's NYS for New York State, nysauctions.com. And that will tell you about the online tax deed sales in New York. They're not all online. Uh, some of them are live. And the best way to find out about all of them, and what I like to use something called tax sale finders. It's the new tax, uh, um, tax sale resources. I'm switching all my members over to tax sale finders. So if you're a member of the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator, you have access to tax sale finders, which gives, gives you even more information, but it lets you know what tax sales are coming up all across the country which ones are live, which ones are online, and how many properties are in the original or in the sale on the original list that comes out from the county. Okay. Um, and Nicole, you could put a link in there for the uh, Tax Lean Profits Accelerator, um, taxleanlady.com forward slash membership, I think is the link that tells people everything they get when they join the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator. Okay. But I am so excited, I gotta tell everybody about tomorrow is the Investing for Success Conference. It's live online and it's free to come live to the whole thing. It starts at 11 a.m. Eastern time and is gonna go to five o'clock or close to it, okay? And I've got nine other experts that I'll be interviewing. As a matter of fact, I just got off the phone with uh, Carl Fisher of uh, Camaplan, which is a self-directed IRA company where I myself have an account with Camaplan. And then I have also Adam Bergman will be later in the day um, tomorrow. He is also a self-directed IRA expert who has a few best-selling books um, so those are the two, uh, retirement account people that we're going to have. Um, but I also have some really amazing ladies with me tomorrow that I'll be interviewing. We're going to kick it off at 11 AM with somebody who's been my mentor for years. Her name is Marnie Pearson Kunz. She's also a best-selling author. And as a matter of fact, 
the first book that that first bestseller that I contributed to Marnie uh, published years ago. And I'm going to talk about what's in that book. That really tells my story um, of how I got started with tax liens, how I became the tax lien lady. And uh, I'm so I'm going to show you that book. Um, tomorrow when I'm interviewed, because later in the day, in the afternoon, Marnie's going to kick it off. I'll be inter- interviewing her. And later in the day, <clears throat> excuse me, Marnie will be interviewing me. Um, and I'll talk about how I got started with tax lien investing. Uh, and not for you guys, because you know this, what a tax lien is, why it's a great investment. But I'll also talk about what's happened in the last few years and what's happened as a result of COVID. So um, that will be my interview. Now, each interview is only about a half an hour, but guess what? A lot of us are going to be giving away some free stuff, valuable free stuff. Uh, Some will be giving special offers or special discounts and and, um, some will be giving away some free. My favorite freebie is going to be from a lady that is um, a new mentor of mine, and her name is Dr. Carrie Skirdla. She is going to be on uh, in the morning at um, actually midday for us. If you're on Eastern time, it'll be midday at around 12 o'clock, 12.15. Dr. Carrie's around then, but she is excellent. So you guys are going to watch that. Even if you can't be there the whole day, um, take your lunch hour early. If you're on uh, central time or mountain time, um, take a mid mid morning break. If you're on Pacific time and watch that interview with Dr. Carrie Skirdla. Um, all the times will be and the schedule will be posted the day of the conference. So when we start the conference, we're gonna post that schedule. We're, we haven't done it ahead of time. Um, so, uh, and and by the way, Nicole has put in the um, comments for you, the link to register if you haven't already registered. Now, when you register, there's something else I gotta tell you about, okay? because it's free to come to the live day. The whole day of interviews are free to come to live. But in order to get the replay, I am selling the replays. And that is going to pay for the cost of doing this. And I'm also giving a percentage of what I get from this to a charity that I support. Um, uh, uh, A person that I know is a pastor in India. And he is an Indian and he is um, a, a, a Christian pastor, but he goes to remote villages in India and provides medicine and food and clothing to people that need it. But I don't know if you're aware of this, but India is one of those countries where if you're not a Hindu, you're you're. Um, well, let's just say they they want to make Hindu, which is I, which I love. Um, I, I love that religion, by the way. As a matter of fact, when I, I was uh, doing the research for my friend uh, Jonathan Paradisi, who's the pastor that I'm talking about, I found a Christian ashram <laughs> in India, which was started by uh, uh, monks, Catholic Catholic monks, who um, have taken on some of the uh, customs of the Hindu religion, some of the practices of the Hindu religion. So I, I thought that was very interesting. But now the government over there is making it very hard for Christians and Muslims and any other religion other than Hindu. Um, so uh, anyway, enough said about that. I just wanted you to know where that money was going to. Um, oh, and uh, Ray is asking, how much is it? Well, members do get a discount, so make sure you check out any member emails if you're a member of the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator. But the price, if you wait until tomorrow to buy the VIP ticket for the conference, um, it's going to be $149. If you get it early, like today, 
it's $97. And then if you are a member, you get an extra little discount on top of that. So, um, so pay attention to your emails if you are uh, still a member, Ray. Um, and let's see. Um, okay, we do have a question. And we have got a couple of questions here. Wonderful. Okay, let me let me get to your questions, guys. All right. How do you estimate the foreclosure cost when purchasing a deed or a foreclosure ready tax lien? And you know what, where, where did we get that question from Nicole? Because it's really state dependent. It depends on what state and the questions that you have to ask when you buy a secondary lien. So if you're buying a lien from another investor that's ready to foreclose now, um, or even from the county that's ready to foreclose now, it really depends on what state you're getting it at. All right. If you're getting it in New Jersey, the investor can pay the subsequent taxes. So you have to find out what subsequent taxes still haven't been paid. Okay, those will have to be paid, right, for you to foreclose. Um, and then you have the foreclosure costs. Okay, which are about, I'd say, $1,500 in, in New Jersey. They could go more if there are problems, you know, like if there are a lot of heirs that have to be notified or a lot of people that have to be notified, it could be more. But <clears throat> that's, uh, you know, that's a pretty um, good price to, to figure. In Florida, what you don't actually have to foreclose but you do have to pay a couple years taxes. Like if you're buying a lien that was bought two years ago and now it's time to foreclose, well, now you have to pay those, all those taxes. Um, you, you have to pay any outstanding liens. So if there's only the subsequent liens from the one that you bought, that's fine. Then you know you have to pay two years of taxes, but there could be prior liens to yours, you would also have to pay them off before you foreclose. So that's one thing that you have to check. And the amount that you have to pay, because you're not foreclosing, you do a tax deed application. So it just depends on which county you're doing it in, because they'll each have a different fee that you'll have to pay in order to do the tax deed application. All right, but it normally is not as much as a foreclosure in another state. So it's normally only a couple of hundred dollars. Um, like two to five hundred dollars. I don't think it'll be a thousand dollars. What is going to cost you is paying any subsequent or prior liens. You have to find out how many prior liens, how many subsequent liens are there. They there there's going to be two subsequent liens that you have to pay if you if it's a two year old um, lien. If it's older than that, there's going to be more. Okay, so it depends on the age of the lien and whether there are any prior liens to that. Okay. Oh, and Sarah says that was her question and is in New York. Again, it depends. Now, here's the thing about New York. Anywhere else, I'd say it depends on the state. <laughs> in New York, it depends on the city, <laughs> on the town. Because as I told you, um, most of the counties are deed, uh, sell deeds, except for Nassau County has a big lien sale every year. But the towns can do what they want. And I have a lien in Port Jervis, okay? Well, Port Jervis, um, when you buy the lien, you actually have to pay the current taxes or they won't give you the deed. They won't give you the tax lien certificate, okay? And then you have to keep paying the taxes for two years until you can get the deed. But every city is different. Okay, so it's hard to answer that question for New York. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, sorry about that, Sarah. And um, okay. Hi, Christine. Christine, so good to see you. Yes, my holidays were great. Are you still in PA? And actually, my holidays were very quiet. 
we stayed home. We did have some, uh, my, we did have some people over. My sons came over with their girlfriends. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we didn't go anywhere. So had a very quiet um, holiday, but it was very nice. Thank you for asking. And I hope your holidays, I hope everybody here, I hope you had a wonderful new year and a great holiday season. Um, okay. Another question from Ray. I hear there are going to be a lot of owners not paying in New York and New Jersey this year, probably because of uh, COVID, some people have lost their jobs. So there may be people not paying their taxes and there may be more. Now, we have seen an increase in the deeds available in 2020, but we haven't really seen an increase in the liens available. And I think we'll see that in 2021. OK, another question from Sarah. Um, is it correct to say that you only need to foreclose on tax liens, not tax deeds? Or does that also depend on the state? I believe the second one, but my partner thought the first one. So I want to go, okay. <laughs> so your partner and you having a discussion of whether you have to foreclose on deeds or not, right? Um, for regular deeds, like here in Pennsylvania, you buy the deed, you own the property. In New York, when you buy a deed, you buy the deed, you own the property, okay? It's only redeemable deeds that you, in some states you have to foreclose not in Texas. You don't have to foreclose because you already own the property when you buy the deed, but you do have to wait the redemption period. But in all the other redeemable deed states, you have to wait until the redemption period's over. Now, you don't always have to foreclose with an attorney. In some states, in some of the redeemable deed states, you just um, pay the county a fee and get the deed after the redemption period's over. But in Georgia, you do have to foreclose with an attorney. Okay. Um, okay. And Ray is asking, how much money might we need to buy in New York or New Jersey? Uh, well, liens or deeds. Um, and where? And again, in New York, it really depends on where. Okay, because every every town can be different in New York. Um, every, uh, not every town can be different. Cities can be different from the counties in New York. Okay. And you're actually buying the property. If you go to the county deed sales in New York, so you need more money there. You also need more money at some of the lien sales in New York, because unlike, um, Nassau County, where the interest rate is bid down in some of the cities that are not in uh, Suffolk or Nassau, um, the price of the, of the lien is bid up, okay? They bid premium. They don't bid down the interest rate, instead they bid premium. So for that, you do need more. The lien that I bought in um, Port Jervis, I paid 20,000 for, okay? However, in New Jersey, and in New Jersey, <laughs> you do pay premium also, all right? So, but they also, in New Jersey, they also have utility liens. Those are the ones that I kind of get my clients started on, utility liens. And for those, you need less money. You could get started um, with liens with only a couple thousand dollars, but with deeds, you need about 10 times that much. So in New Jersey, I would say you could start with a couple of thousand. Of course, the more you have, the better it is. If you have 10,000, that's better. If you want bigger liens, you got to have more money because you're going to have to pay premium for it. So um, in New York, I'd say 20,000 minimum. And if you want deeds more, you're going to need more. Um. Okay, and Sarah says, yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Yeah, raises that helps me as, at a starting place. Twenty thousand or more for tax deeds. Yes, yeah, twenty thousand is the minimum, and that's for things like land, trailers. Um, tough to get a three bedroom house for twenty thousand. I uh, um, unless you go upstate. Okay. Sarah says, if you purchase the note on a property, does it make sense to also purchase the lien on the property so you make the interest if the owner starts paying again and does redeem so you won't have to pay off someone else to redeem it yourself? Um, Sarah, tomorrow in the conference, one of the speakers, his name is Jay Tannenbaum, and he is a note expert. I know nothing about notes. Jay is the note expert. And what I'm going to ask him tomorrow when I do the interview with him is a little bit sneaky on my part. I'm going to ask him if he'll come back and do a webinar with me, <laughs> and then he'll be able to ask him. You won't be able to ask any questions in the conference because I only have like 30 minutes max with each person. So they're not gonna have time to answer questions, but I'm gonna see, like if there's enough interest in the conference, they'll come back and do a webinar. And in that webinar, I'm gonna have them answer questions, okay? <laughs> so um, that, that question is a little above my expertise because here's the thing, if you buy, if you get the lien on that property um, and you get to foreclose on it with the lien, that note pretty much goes away. Um, okay, Abe is asking, if I were to buy a tax deed in Lyon County, Nevada, would I be required to foreclose? No, you would own the deed, you'd own the property. You would have to clear the title through a quiet title process with a term, you'd have to do a quiet title process or uh, some kind of title clarification with, um, with a title company or a quiet title process with an attorney, but not a foreclosure. It, it would already be foreclosed. Um, okay. Yeah, Jean is saying some condos in New York, 60,000 and up to get them at the tax sale. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Natalie, what do you think would be the average for Florida? Less money in Florida, Natalie, because the interest rate gets bid down. You don't pay premium. So $2,000 it would be quite enough in Florida. Quite enough to get a few liens, not just one. But then when it comes time to foreclose, that's when you need more money. Joe. Hi, Joe. Um, what have you heard about Lake County, Indiana, online or live? I, you know what? I ha I've been so busy getting ready for this conference I'm doing tomorrow. I haven't paid attention to Lake. <laughs> so... Um, The regular tax sale is usually online. It's only the commissioner's sale that's usually live. So I would expect that the regular tax sale, which usually happens in the fall, um, probably already happened, is it, it was online, but the, the commissioner's sale usually happens around March. So don't know yet. Um, there is a site to uh, onyxelectronics.com is where you would check that out. Okay. Uh, and um, if you got here late, Joe, you better watch the replay because <laughs> I talk about the conference I'm doing tomorrow and you want to register today and get your VIP ticket today. Okay. Uh, where do you find out more about the conference tomorrow? Yes, it's all day from 11 a.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern. 
It's only it's only tomorrow. OK. Um, and again, oh, that was Ray that said he's he was late. Uh, yeah. Watch the replay. You'll you'll get all the information. And Nicole also put it in the comments, the link to register. Um, Sarah's asking, what is the actual value of purchasing a lien or deed on common areas or signage or the building structure of condos where the individual units have their own owners? Okay. Um, I do not like purchasing common ground in a condo association. Uh, but if you're purchasing the condo itself, then you have ownership of the condo, okay? What you have to watch out for in some states is you might be liable for the homeowner's fees that are owed. Some states will go after you for that. Um, don't have to worry about it here in Pennsylvania. I don't know about New York. And I don't think you have to worry about it in New Jersey yet, but make sure you check that out. You check that, um, the tax, don't check it with the homeowners association because they're always gonna tell you you have to pay it even when you don't really. Um, yeah, but I would not buy, I would purchase liens on common areas. Uh, okay. Um, Calvin says, I bought a 2017 tax lien in Florida at the beginning of 2020. I foreclosed on it and it went to a tax deed auction. Yeah, you didn't actually foreclose. You did a tax deed application. The property came to me, so I have the tax deed. What do I need to do now? Clear the title. You need to do a quiet title process with an attorney if you want to sell it. Because, and the reason why you wanna do that is because if somebody needs to get financing, your their financing company is gonna want title insurance. And the only way to get title insurance is to, have, you're gonna to need to clear the title of the property or they won't they won't give them the, the loan. And Nicole has put the link in there again for to register for the conference tomorrow. Uh, and I also want to tell if you guys are not in the Investing for Success private Facebook group, you need to be in there, too, because on Thursdays, I do another Facebook Live in there. Uh, it's a private group. Anybody can join, but you do have to answer some questions and agree to the terms there. And the reason why we do that is because we don't want people in there trying to sell stuff or... Um, posting things that really don't apply. So we want to make sure you're interested in tax liens um, and that you agree to our terms before we let you in. But it's free, it's a free group. It is private. So only those in there can see the see what's in there and come to the Facebook Lives that we have there on Thursday. Now, those Facebook Lives are different than this one. It's not about answering questions. I do a mini training it's called overcoming challenges. So if you have a challenge um, that's keeping you from investing in tax liens and uh, you want the answer to it, that's what I give a training on in there. So just let me know what your challenge is. You could post it there in the group in the investing for success group and I will um, do a training on it on Thursday in the Thursday Facebook group there. Uh, Thursday Facebook Live, I should say there. Okay, um, let's see, we have some more questions here. Uh, Sarah, um, in addition to the other question that she asked, if it's common ground, can you then collect rent from the condo owners? Or are you just, who's gonna pay you rent? If the owner's association would have to pay you rent, what are you gonna do if they don't? And I, I you know, it's not what I would want to do, but um, use your own judgment. Um, okay, if a property is on the market and you buy it, do you also get the right to redeem if there were tax liens on it? Yes, you do. 
yes, you do get the right to redeem. Uh, in most states, the original owner would not have a separate agreement with them. The only states where you would where they, that might happen are Indiana and Illinois, but to, they can't do that in the other states because it's illegal. In most states, it's illegal to have a separate agreement with the owner. Everything has to go through the tax collector, except for, <laughs> uh, I know, except for Illinois, and I think maybe Indiana. So those are the states where you'd have to watch out for that. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, you have the right to redeem if you're an owner of the property. Ah, Ray says you just got registered. Great, Ray, I will see you tomorrow. I'm excited about tomorrow. Um, okay, Butch, hi, Great Lakes. Which state up here is best for tax deeds? Michigan. <laughs> Michigan, their sales are in the fall. Um, I also like New York too, but there's not much available in the Great Lakes region of New York. But you, I, I do like upstate New York too. So I would look at both Michigan and New York. <laughs> All right. Um, and Nicole put in that link again for the group this time, for the Investing for Success group to, to join us there so that you can Join me again on Thursday. So if you're in the conference tomorrow, I will see you tomorrow and I will see you Thursday, right? Ray says he likes Michigan. I like Michigan too. All right, Sarah. Um, I think you mean specifically, specifically in terms of the common ground question. That makes sense. I was looking at a few liens where the condo's pool was on the property. I thought that might have value in terms of collecting rent and, and if they didn't pay, I could charge membership fees for the use of the pool or something like that. Sticky situation, Sarah. Who's gonna take care of the pool? You gonna take care of the pool? and you'd have to charge the condo association, not the owners. I don't know whether you would get paid or not. I would, uh, uh, um, I don't know if I would, uh, yeah. Jean says I would stay away from that. I'm with you, Jean. I would stay away from that too. Um, yeah. You need to really have a recourse if they don't pay. And you know, if it's something where you have to hire an attorney, then is it really worth it? Right? Like if you have to hire an attorney just to get paid, is it really worth it? And Butch is asking, is Michigan a tax deed state? Yes, it is. Michigan is a deed state. And thanks to, you know, many of the, their sales were online. But now, thanks to COVID last year, like all their sales were online. <laughs> and they happen in the fall. And um, by the way, the place to go for the Michigan, to find out about the Michigan tax sales is um, tax sale. Uh, I think it's tax. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head. I know it's taxsale.info and it is their state website for, for that. And I believe it's tax-sale.info. Okay. Yeah, the pool, and going back to what we were talking about before um, about the Condo Association of Common Ground and the pool, Christine says, I would think a pool is part of the rental ownership contract with the, with the homeowners association. Yeah, it is. You'd wind up in a legal battle is what would happen between the owners, the association, and you know, it wouldn't be worth it. 
Um, but she's asking how much would I need to get started and where would I find the listing? Uh, tax, uh, that, that um, website I just gave you, tax-sale.info is their, their website for that. And if you need help with that, Butch, then join the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator, where I actually have uh, trainings on the Michigan tax sales. Um, and I have courses. Uh, 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 one course you could get is my online tax deeds course. It has a whole section on the Michigan tax sales. Um, And Nicole has put that link for you for the taxsale.info website, the Michigan website in there. But if you need more help, again, uh, we talked about the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator earlier. Um, Sarah's asking what times are the Thursday lives also 2 p.m. Eastern? Yes, they are at 2 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> And uh, Sarah's asking, what about liens where the neighbor has encroached significantly over the property line or even built half their house on, or their dock on that property? Do you have any recourse or just recommend avoiding those? Um, you do have recourse because it's, once you own it, it's, well, you don't have recourse when you own the lien. You have recourse when you own the, if you wind up with the property, you own the property. Then you, you can, you know, force them off or force them to pay you. But you might still need an attorney to do that. Um, I just stay away from stuff like that. When I go to a tax sale, the first thing I do is look at the property in a uh, overhead map where I see the property lines or actually look at the tax map and I can see what's on that property. And if there's something on that property that is also on another plot of land, <laughs> not the parcel that is in the tax sale, then that would throw up a little red flag for me. <laughs> and I would not invest in that, you know. Okay, and the other thing you might have to do if you are looking at a property like that and you do want to bid on it is you would actually have to look at the deed and see if that neighbor has a right away. Um, okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Nicole put the link in there for the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator. Um, Christine, can you touch on your due diligence process? So many people forget about physically reviewing the property, location, neighborhood, town. How do you rate your investments and use those rates for bidding? Okay. And by rate your investments, Christine, Christine was in the business. <laughs> so she knows what this is all about. By rate your investments, she re means rate the potential properties that you're going to bid on um, for bidding. In other words, uh, which ones you know are good, which ones, and the way I used to do it is I would just on my bid sheet, I would put, yes, this is a go and put how much I'm willing to go to on that property or put um, look at first so that I knew I had to physically look at the property before I bid on it. Okay. Or no, or straight out no. Um, or it might be only if I could get it at, uh, at a certain, um, you know, like at the minimum bid or, uh, at 18% if I was going to a tax sale where it was bid down in New Jersey, for instance. Um, yeah, Christine says that's the most common question she gets. And, and that is a question is how do you do your due diligence? Well, in the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator um, with Tax Sale Finders, you could do a lot more than you could do with Tax Sale Resources. You could actually see the properties and see all the data and the data for some of the data for the neighborhood, like if it's in a floodplain, if there are environmental hazards around, 
Um, but I always recommend that you do look at the property and then you see the neighborhood. Okay, I do recommend that you physically look at it or have, if you're doing it from a distance, have somebody look at it for you. Okay, I have invested without doing that. I've gotten in trouble sometimes <laughs> without doing that. But I have invested successfully without doing that when I've invested in building lots in another, like in Arizona, for instance. There was building going around them. They, they everything looked flat. It looked good. Um, and I was able to do it successfully there. Uh, but in a lot of places, you have to be careful. Um, what is your assessment on Milwaukee, Wisconsin now? Butch, I told everybody before, I don't know if you were here then, that I am not an expert everywhere in the country. Anybody that tells you they are is pulling your leg. I am not an expert in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I don't know much about that area. Um, Wisconsin is a lean state. I, uh, no, I'm sorry, they're not. Wyoming is a lean state. Wisconsin, I'm not sure, actually. It's all in my state guide, but I don't go around with all that information in my head. So I'm not even sure if it's a tax lien or tax deed state, but you know where else you, that information is? In tax sale finders, which people that are in the tax lien profits accelerator have access to now. Um, if you're in the tax lien profits accelerator and you're using tax sale resources, you if you're a platinum member, you will be switched over to tax sale finders. Uh, which does a lot more than tax sale resources. Um, Jean is asking, not necessarily. I have a friend who had a roommate and had trouble evicting. Not always that easy. Okay. And she was answering Sarah who said, I assume that it's easier and cheaper to evict someone from a garage or a dock than a home. <laughs> that depends on the state, Sarah. That depends on the state. Some states, it, it really depends on the state. It doesn't depend on the property, what type of property. It doesn't matter, all right? It depends on the state. It's easier to do it here in PA than it is in New Jersey or New York, I will tell you that. You still have to go through. I learned this from being a landlord. Um, even if you wanna be nice, don't wait. Go to the magistrate first, get the eviction notice. Okay. Yeah, tax sale finders is what I now use, Christine. Um, I have used uh, Lean Point, which is also good. Um, it's just that I was using two different things. I was using tax sale resources and Lean Point and, and tax sale resources and tax sale finders is the same company. So now everything is with the same people. Um, the eviction question was in Florida. I'm not sure how tough evictions are in Florida. Um, but I do have friends that are investors there. And I think it depends on the situation. In Florida, it depends on the situation. Okay, guys, it is 2.45. And, um, and for the due diligence process, Christine, I only touched on it because it, it you know, I've done whole trainings on due diligence. <laughs> and um, if you want more on that, Join the Investing for Success group and ask me what the challenge for anybody that has a challenge with due diligence. Um, ask me your question in there or tell me it's not so much a question, but tell me what your challenge is in the Investing for Success group. And I'll do a training on that in one of the Facebook lives. All right. I hope to see you guys. Um, tomorrow, okay, in the conference, 
Uh, you could register for free for the whole day. If you do want a VIP ticket, get it today. It's discounted, it's $52 less today. The VIP ticket gives you access to all the recordings because um, you don't get the recordings for free when you join the free uh, uh, conference, you only get to be there live for free, okay? Um, and, uh, and you also get my uh, profitable tax lien investing blueprint workshop when you get that VIP ticket. So get it today. It's you know a $500 course, it's a $497 course. Today you could get it for $97. Tomorrow you get it for $149. Still a still a bargain, right? But get it today. Um, okay. Yeah, Christine just wanted to um, remind people about the importance of doing due diligence. So true, Christine. You know, I know what to do, and I still I still make mistakes sometimes because I don't take my own advice. And then I kick myself saying, now, why did I do that? That's what I tell people not to do, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, she says, it's very important. I just had somebody show me a lien they purchased on a burnt down home. They looked at internet pictures. Yep. That, as a matter of fact, when I went to a tax sale down in Tennessee, a uh, redeemable deed sale, and I looked at the properties. I didn't get anything in that sale. It was an online sale, but I went down there to look at the properties. There was one property that was, and this was in Chattanooga, showing a house there. House wasn't there. It was either knocked down, demolished, or, or something, but there was no house there. It was just a lot, all right, uh, with nothing standing, nothing from the house that was there. So that happens. That does happen. So it's always good to, to look at it. Um, Okay, and you're welcome, Butch. And I'm glad that you enjoyed the information because I love answering your questions. I love doing this. And hopefully I will see some of you guys tomorrow and maybe on Thursday. And if not, I'm here next week. We do this the first three weeks every month. I'm here at two o'clock to answer your questions about tax lien investing. Okay, all right, everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye.